Hello, it's Mark here from Yoko Bear Reads with the third of my 12 ghost stories for Christmas. Stories that I'm recommended that you read uh, in these dark nights. And today's story is from this collection, which is called Tales from the Dead of Night, 13 classic ghost stories uh, from Profile Books. Um, I've got the hardback edition here, but I know that this has just been uh, published in paperback uh, in the UK. Not sure about elsewhere, um, but this is worth getting hold of. And it's a real good anthology of, as it says here, 13 master storytellers who pull back the veil of everyday life to reveal the nightmares which lurk just out of sight. And... The story that I'm going to be talking about today is by somebody who's more known for her crime novels, which is Ruth Rendell. And this is a story she wrote in 1972 for Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, for those of you that are old enough to remember Ellery Queen. And it was basically just a short ghost story. So, The Haunting of Shawley Rectory. This is a great story. Um, and also I love the way there's a nod in here in the name. Shawley Rectory sounds very much like Borley Rectory, which was the real life house in Britain that was reputed to have been the most haunted house in Britain. Um, and the well-known ghost hunter and investigator Harry Price investigated uh, Borley Rectory, which eventually burnt down in very mysterious circumstances. There is actually a book that's going to be part of my 12 Ghost Stories for Christmas that's about Borley Rectory, so I'm not going to say too much. But I really think Ruth Rendell was having a nod to real-life supposed hauntings in, in the title of this, in Shawley Rectory. So, what's this story about? Well, it's about a um, vicar and his wife and daughter who are about to move into the rectory attached to a church in a small English village. And a few people have lived there before. And from the story, you, you, you find out that some people have reported ghostly goings on, whereas other families that have lived there haven't. So, you know, there's a bit of doubt in the village of, is this real, is this not, is, is, this, is there a haunting going on? Because sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But the house has been empty for a while, and the Reverend Galton and his wife and family are about to move in. And what I love about this story is that it's told very much from the structure of it is it's almost like you're hearing it as if you're hearing village gossip it's from you know the way that it's done is different um conversations overheard conversations um and also part of the kind of prose is people reporting oh i heard from this person that this person said this so you're getting kind of a bit of an unreliable narration because people could, could have their information right, they might not have. But you do know that there's something not quite right about the rectory. And, um, and this is the first thing that I'm going to read out of this. And I think this is where I got absolutely hot, hooked on the story. There's quite a good cliffhanger between paragraphs, um, or between sections of this book. And this is... Two of the neighbours talking about the family that's moving into the rectory. He's very young, said Eleanor, a few days after our discussion of the haunting um, with the Scots. He's under 30. That won't bother me, I said. I don't intend to be preached at by him. Anyway, why not? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, I said, hast thou ordained strength? Hark at the devil quoting scripture, said Eleanor. They say his wife's only 23. I thought she must have met them. She knew so much about them, but no. It's just what's being said. Patsy got it from Judy Lawrence, and Judy said they're moving in next month, and her mother's coming with them. Who, Judy's, I said. No, don't be silly, said my wife. Mrs Galton's mother, the rector's mother-in-law, 
she's coming to live with them. Move in, they did. And out again, two days later. And so there's that brilliant, why did they move out? What happened in those two days? And you get the explanation. And again, with a lot of ghost stories, there's just this sense that something's happened and you get drip fed the information. And, um, and also as well, I just love the way the description of what people see is. And I think this was a bit that I really, really enjoyed. And this is um, after they moved out. This is the mother-in-law, Mrs. Golden. This is what she, she says. The moon was quite bright that night and was shining into the room. There were people, two figures. I don't know what to call them between the windows. One of them, the girl, was lying huddled on the floor. The other figure, an older woman, was bending over her. She stood up when I opened the door and looked at me. I knew I wasn't seeing real people. I don't know how, but I just knew that. I remember I couldn't move my hand to switch the light on. I was frozen, just staring at that pale, tragic face whilst it stared back at me. I did manage at last to back out and close the door and got back to my daughter and my son-in-law in the kitchen and, well, well, I collapsed. It was the most terrifying experience of my life. The conclusion of this story is really, really interesting. Um, and I'm not going to say too much about it because I think uh, the great thing about ghost stories is, is, is that payoff that you get and I really don't want to spoil that. The only thing I will say is, is that it kind of challenges the ideas that ghosts come are always from the past and that's all i'm going to say so yeah this was a great story and again it's a great little uh, anthology there's some great stuff in here um that's worth reading um so the next one the next ghost story that i'm going to introduce is about some grieving parents and a talisman and of being careful what you wish for. Anyway, sleep well. <laughs>